Hey everybody, it's the lady here. Anyhow, we haven't really made very many videos here lately. I think Tracy's put up a few, but we've just been real busy and stuff like that. And uh, anyhow, we got to talking about it today, and so I decided that we'd do a little short video, kind of let everybody show you what we've kind of been up to. Um, around the farm here maybe show a few little things to forage or something like that but uh anyhow we're gonna i'm gonna go on ahead and get this video started and she can uh end up finishing it up after i do show a few things so we're gonna get it started okay this is one thing that i've been doing i've been doing a lot of uh had a lot of wood given to me this year. Uh, this here is one of my pile stock piles of wood. I just done this here smaller one yesterday. I've got probably, I'm probably gonna wind up with, by the time I get all of it, I will probably wind up with three to four times this amount of wood. Uh, I've got oak, I've got a hickory, I've got to cut up this winter, uh, got several types of oaks that I've got to get cut up, uh, like four or five of them has already been cut up into chunks that I've just got to, uh, cut to the right length and get it split over at my cousin's house he had like five big oak trees cut down they're all piled up in his backyard so i've got to get the rest of it too and um and i've just about got one oak tree completely cut up right outside of town here and like i said that guy also has a hickory tree for me to cut up this winter it just blew over a couple of months ago but it was just so hot that i had to stop doing any kind of wood processing because of the heat and all so but now i'm back at it and uh anyhow go right up here as you can see the, the walnuts are definitely starting to fall out here this is our walnut tree i don't know if i'll be able to show all the nuts up in there because of the sun shining but there is it's got a lot of walnuts on it right now it's kind of dangerous standing under it because they are falling this here is our passion flower vine passion fruit vine or the American term, they call these here May Pops. But I still call them passion fruit. And they're loaded pretty good this year. They should start ripening up here before long with these cool temperatures that we that we're getting. I just brought two little pieces home and planted them out here. There used to be a great big one over here at the corner of our property in the field. And the farmers, they ended up finally, they finally ended up killing it out. So then we didn't have none anymore. They had done some dirt work and you know, pushed around enough that it just died out. So I brought a couple of them home and planted out here and they are doing wonderful and they just spread all over out here on the ground also i just have to mow them down but they're looking actually pretty good right now i'm up here at the big garden i've been working on getting it all cleaned out cleaned up for the winter tilled over i came up here the other day and sold a few more turnips out across through here i don't know how well they'll do 
or if they'll even do anything. It's actually pretty late in the season to get them started, but I figured, what the heck, why not try it? Uh, that's my little patch of turnips that I got going right now that I planted uh, probably about a month, month and a half ago. As you can see, several of them I can already get get some decent greens off of some of them right now so that's the main thing that I want anyway is the greens I don't the turnips themselves I don't really I'll eat them but they're not my favorite part of that about that plant the greens are so anyhow I will definitely be getting me some nice greens here before long and Teresa should be able to start canning this some up for put back for the winter months and all uh, there's one strip out there for some reason they just don't really do as good i guess the soil hasn't been amended enough over there i did lengthen or widen the garden a couple years ago so that area over there has not had as much amendments uh, with leaves and grass clippings and all. Well, I just got the last bits of garden out. There may be a few things still straggle along. And then we have turnip greens. And I'm going to can some more turnip greens this year. But I got a little more basil. That's probably going to be about the end of it. And uh, these um, uh, peppers, I can cut that spot out. There's some good ones, though. Um, these peppers, um, Mad Hatter peppers, they've done really good. Um, this is about the third year I've grown them, and they just are abundant. And I didn't know, I didn't use them a whole lot except for just snacking on uh, at first. And uh, I've learned... Um, so I have started, uh, dehydrating them so that I can, uh, throw them, I cut them up in chunks and dehydrate them, and, uh, then I can throw those in soups and things, and, uh, I sliced some and pickled them along with the little yellow ones. The yellow ones are the Trinidad perfume peppers, so I sliced these up and pickled some. And uh, gonna try that. I haven't tried them yet. I've done it and canned them, but I haven't tried them. So um, <clears throat> gonna do try that this year. But recently, I have roasted these and done the uh, roasted sweet peppers. And because uh, these are not hot, they're very very mild, except for right up here by the stem gets a little bit warm. Same with the Trinidad perfumes. They're not hot, but right up in that stem area uh, can get a little warm. But these, I took these and um, quartered them and uh, roasted them. And they are absolutely delicious that way. So I'm canning some of those to have roasted sweet peppers when I make something uh, that calls for roasted sweet peppers. Um, like, uh, well, you can use them in um, Italian dishes, spaghetti, uh, maybe even chili, uh, on pizza, different things like that that you can use uh, roasted uh, peppers for. And these make really good ones. Anyway, I got a few more tomatoes. They're about done. And a few um, dried, uh, uh, these are the scarlet runner beans. And... Um, I, I like them dried uh, and then and then cook them. So I have been waiting until they get dry and then picking them off and shelling them and use them for um, dry beans. And I uh, really like those. So that's about it. We're about done. We've got uh, maybe a few more peppers. And uh, I've got some comfrey I need to cut and dry. And then... Um, the uh, turnip greens and that's going to be about it for us for this year <laughs>
So I guess I have to correct myself. <laughs> um, there is lots of stuff left in the garden. Um, it's winding down, but um, I do still have some Malabar spinach out here. Now it's getting tough uh, now. Uh, the Malabar spinach is starting to get tough. And um, most of it's done for, but lots of seeds. There are lots of seeds out there to collect. <clears throat> so don't forget that. Uh, if you're a, kind of a new gardener, um, learn how to collect seeds. And uh, so, um, especially if you use heirloom seeds, you can uh, collect the seeds and get the same thing the next year. But even if you don't use heirloom seeds, uh, you can get something out of it. It won't be the original what you bought, but uh, it might just be a, a weird uh, variety or uh, back to a basic variety. Uh, mostly, I buy heirloom seeds so that I can get the same thing. But if it just happens that I don't, I will still collect those seeds and get something out of it. You might just get cherry tomatoes out of uh, some tomato seeds. If they're not heirloom, you'll end up with a bunch of cherry tomatoes, but that's okay too. Still edible, right? <laughs> um, now, I did come in here and get a bunch of flowers. I always plant a bunch of marigolds in my garden. Um, it's supposed to help with pests, but I love them too. And uh, it's not helping with this pest. But anyway, it's supposed to help with pests and so I always plant them all around my gardens. I always plant too many. <laughs> and then by the end of the season, it looks like this. <laughs> but, um, but that's okay. I just picked a bunch of them to take in and make um, some bouquets. Um, and they'll be mixed colors because I've got oranges and reds and yellows and uh, have these giant marigolds. They make a beautiful bouquet with a little bit of the orange in there. Um, anyway, will you stop? Spunky. This is Spunky. Spunky the monkey. <clears throat> and two more down there that don't like me. <laughs> I have um, some feral cats. And they'll come about that close and that's it. They're done. And if I go toward them, they'll run away. But not old Spunky here. Anyway, so, as I was saying, there's still lots left in the garden as far as seeds, uh, flowers. I still have a few herbs, kind of, uh, they're seeding out. That's some basil there, seeding out. And um, some cherry tomatoes. And, let's see, some more peppers. Those peppers are falling down now. But there's still peppers in there to collect. But lots of seeds. And that's what I have been doing just now. Is uh, collecting some of the seeds. Not everything's ready uh, to seed. But um, a lot of these um, <clears throat> marigolds. I've been collecting marigold seeds. And um, ashwagandha. I have ashwagandha. And I've been collecting those seeds. And uh, anyway... So, so, there you go. There's uh, the last bit of garden. There's still stuff in there. And I'm fixing to uh, cut some of that um, Malabar spinach. It's gotten tough. I'm going to cut some of it for the rabbits. Give them a good treat. So that's just a little bit of what we've got going on, folks. Um, you know, finishing up the gardens, canning, uh, cleaning. Been doing a lot of cleaning. We cleaned out our chicken coop really good. I know Lee cleaned out the chicken coop. I was gone that day. I had kept talking about cleaning out the chicken coop. 
Uh, you need to do that at least once a year, uh, clean out all the old, um, you know, and put in fresh bedding and stuff. And and uh, I kept talking about it, talking about it, and then Lee finally done it one day when I was gone. I come home and he surprised me to a clean chicken coop. So that was nice. Um, and I turned 60 and uh, Lee didn't. <laughs> Lee's a lot younger than me and um, I turned 60. I was really dreading it. I was really kind of upset about turning 60, but it's just another day. Um, wasn't any worse than turning 40 or 50, really. So, um, my kids gave me a big surprise birthday party for my 60th. And uh, it was a big surprise. They kept it a good secret. And um, I, I said there's a couple of the grandkids they didn't tell because I knew because if they had, they'd have told me. <laughs> but uh, but it was a big surprise and it was a, a, a wonderful day. Um, they even invited um, Holland and Lily from Higgs Rock Farm and that was a big surprise. And um, they gave me a, um, among other birthday presents, um, one of my daughters has taken me to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I've always, always wanted to visit Charleston and Savannah. Uh, just the history there is wonderful and the old buildings and the history. And I've read a lot of books about Savannah and about uh, Charleston. And I've always wanted to visit and I never have. So one of my daughters is taking us, uh, me and, and a couple of the daughters, are going to Charleston, South Carolina for Thanksgiving weekend, which will be wonderful. And uh, I will finally get to see some of that, some of those old plantations and old uh, commerce buildings and uh, Charleston Harbor with uh, Fort, Fort Sumner there is where the first uh, shots of the Civil War were fired and, and, um, all that stuff. Anyway, it will be exciting. Um, <clears throat> so, we've just been kind of busy. Church, doing a lot of church uh, things and uh, wrapping up the gardens, canning. Um, gosh. Work, you know, just everything. Uh, so, thanks for watching. Um, we, we're going to try to do a few more foraging videos before the um, season ends. We've got a few more things that we could be foraging. Uh, we haven't done a lot lately. I did help teach a homeschool class on foraging and one on water filtration. Uh, so that was exciting. Um, done that before. We done went over kind of the same thing again with a different class. And um, so I wanna do some more foraging videos, but if you haven't, if you're new here and haven't seen some of our foraging videos, you need to go watch those because uh, with the world going on, the things that are happening in this crazy world right now, uh, it might be a good idea to learn some foraging over, uh, over the winter and uh, learn foraging in your area but uh, over the winter, catch up, learn some foraging. If you don't can, learn some canning, take a canning class. Me and a friend are fixing to give a canning class. Um, next weekend, uh, we're gonna give a canning class at our church uh, for a few women there that don't pressure can. And so we're encouraging them to can more and to can meats and things too. And uh, so we're gonna give a class on that. Um, we're also starting kind of a, uh, a group. We're kind of starting a group to uh, barter and trade and things and to teach uh, some of the homesteading skills and things that, that, you know, everybody needs to know right now. Um, good things to learn about homesteading, preparing, um, all that good stuff, gardening. Um, I need to learn how to sew. So I need to take a sewing class. I mean, there's always some YouTube channel, a YouTube video or class you can take to learn more. And, um, and it's a, a really good uh, time, not a good time. It's a 
urgent. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It's uh, very, get, becoming very urgent to learn things that you may need uh, to survive and to, um, to thrive, you know? And of course, we always try to say the most important, the very most important thing to know right now is Jesus Christ. So, um, so get your heart right first and then learn about foraging from us. Watch some of our playlists of foraging. Uh, learn from other YouTubers or local classes about uh, raising animals, uh, processing animals, gardening, uh, preserving food, uh, all of those kind of things. Um, so, uh, so you know, it's it's time. If you're not there, you better get there because uh, bad things are coming. We know this. We know things are getting crazy. And you don't know what's going to happen next. And uh, stock you up a little food and learn how to do the things that when your food runs out, you can still keep going. Like gardening, animals, all that. Foraging. Learn to forage. That's a huge thing. So anyway, that's enough. Thank you for watching. And give us a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel if you're not. And uh, learn more, learn, 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 and get ready. <laughs>